Legal communities. The Ottoman Empire was a Muslim polity, but one with a large non-Muslim population one which, in most districts of the European provinces, formed a majority of the population. The Muslim population itself was heterogeneous. The Kurdish tribesmen on the eastern borderlands, the Turkoman of Anatolia, or the Bedouin of Syria. Egypt and the Arabian Peninsula had little in common with the Muslim townsfolk. The Shi and Kizilbash communities found especially in central Anatolia, Iraq and the Lebanon professed a form of Islam at odds with the Sunni orthodoxy of the sultans. The legal structure of the empire reflected this diversity. There can be no doubt that tribesmen, villages in remote areas and the Kizilbash, populations that professed allegiance to the Safavid Shah rather than to the Ottoman Sultan followed their own customs in settling disputes and arranging their affairs. At the same time, Christian and Jewish communities enjoyed legal autonomy in intercommunal matters, under the aegis of their own religious leaders. To the Sultans, however, maintained their authority over the non Muslim communities through the system of appointments. Senior churchmen or rabbis held office by virtue of a royal warrant. This would probably involve a cash payment, but, once appointed, the office holder gained tax exemptions and extensive legal and fiscal autonomy within his community, as a model warrant from the late 15th century for the appointment of a Greek metropolitan demonstrates. Because the bearer of this noble decree, the priest named X, has brought European florins as a gift to my noble treasury, I have granted him the metropolitanship of Y. I have commanded that, in whatever way previous, metropolitans exercise their metropolitanship over the priests, monks and other Christians of that area, he should do the same, and whatever churches, vineyards and orchards they had the disposal of, he too should have the disposal of them. He should be exempt from taxes. The priests, monks, and other Christians should recognize him as their metropolitan, and have recourse to him in cases which pertain to the metropolitanship. Three. The heads of the Armenian and Jewish communities enjoyed a similar freedom in regulating the affairs of their communities. They exercised this power, however, by virtue of their appointment by the Sultan, ecclesiastical, Jewish and customary law were all, therefore, current within the empire. Nonetheless, Islamic law always had precedence. From as early, presumably, as the 14th century, the Ottoman sultans established a network of Islamic courts, so that every town throughout the empire had one to serve both the town itself and the surrounding area. All the sultan's subjects therefore came within the jurisdiction of an Islamic court. Muslims used these courts exclusively, whether in cases which involved Muslims alone or in those involving both Muslims and non-Muslims. However, the courts were also open to non-Muslims who, as records testify, often brought their affairs to be settled there, even in defiance of their own religious authorities. Occasionally, for example, Jewish women would take advantage of the more generous provisions of Islamic law to claim their inheritance through the Islamic rather than through the Jewish courts. For a Muslim, on the other hand, had no access to a non-Muslim court, nor did a non-Muslim in any case which also involved a Muslim. The Islamic courts were therefore, the, primary courts of the empire. They existed in every district. They, were open to all, regardless of their religion, and for all mixed cases. And cases involving Muslims alone they were the only courts which, had official status.